You know, I, I told them to put me some walk-on music because I needed to wake you guys up. I know you had this great lunch, and I just wanted to make sure that you knew that, uh, that we're still here fighting, John and I, every day on behalf of uh, Louisiana municipalities all over America. And so let me first say thank you all so much uh, for having me here in Baton Rouge. Uh, the hospitality by the mayor has been amazing. Uh, mayor Broom is truly recognized nationally for her ideas and her creativity, as well as her commitment to public service. And she has hosted an amazing event. So Mayor Broom, thank you so much. And of course, Mayor Williams, who has served as the longest president of, in the LMA history, and he is excited. I can't even use the word uh, that he has shared with me. So excited that his term is coming to an end that he's already pulled off his shoes and ready to go home. So I can tell he's ready. And all the officers, and I have to tell you that John Gallagher is a, a great friend and um, supporter of the National League of Cities, serving on our board, uh, the executive committee of the state municipal leagues. And I, I say these things because I do want you guys to know, because um, sometimes in your, in your own homeland, you don't know what you got. Well, you got a great executive director, and he's my friend. So thank you, John. You know, I, I got to tell you, all, I'm from Florida, South Florida. And uh, I know what hot is, but Baton Rouge, it is hot. The other day I was driving and I got to the red light and the car turned off. I say, even the car is hot. But what happened is I got a rental car that has this automatic thing that saves energy. But I thought the car had got hot and turned off. But it is an amazing community of diversity and energy and downtown uh, and the people are so amazing. And I think that's not just Baton Rouge, that is Louisiana. And I wanna say to you guys, what a great state you have. And it was ironic, this morning um, I was listening to some music and this song came on, God Bless America. And I started reflecting on this year and what we have gone through as Americans. I also reflected on the fact that this is all of our country that we helped to build the strength in America. We know that challenges will come. Did we know that this last year of the pandemic would have come? I don't think so. But there's something about municipal leaders that we can't get on a plane and fly out to Washington, D.C. We can't stop going to the grocery stores. We cannot stop serving our residents. And last year was a challenge for all of us because we were the ones on the front line helping to serve people, making sure that elderly got food and that services continued. And I wanna say to us in this room and you in this room, you need to take a breath. You really need to take a breath. Because sometimes we won't admit that it is hard for us because people think of us as mayors and council members and commissioners, they think that we can solve all of their issues. And sometimes we, ref we don't even take care of our own mental health. You know, I've been seeing where, you know, hearing Michael Phelps talk about when he was swimming and he just was tired and Simone Biles, that we now see someone who wants to compete, but yet the mental stress of the time has gotten to her. Yeah. That same thing is happening to a lot of municipal officials. 
that they are saying, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't know it was going to be this way. I thought I was just going to be the honorable mayor that walked around, looked like I ran things and didn't run nothing, but you can look like you run things. And all of a sudden, this pandemic hit. But I do want to encourage all of us in this room to take care of our own mental health, take care of our family, because we need you in the fight as we continue to represent the Louisiana municipalities. I also want to tell you that, you know, as we look at what we went through, you know, we're not alone. Um, our businesses also were stressed. Our residents were stressed. And I think it's going to take a team of people to help us get back to not normal, to move on. Because you can't do it by yourself. I remember when I was mayor, and, uh, and I grew up in a really small city. Uh, my city was 9,000 people. And we had one red light. Actually, it was a blinking light. It wasn't even a red light. And I remember when I first got elected, I was 24 years old. And uh, I used to have dinner with my mother right before the city commission meeting. We ate. I went to the commission meeting. And my mother came in the back door while we were uh, transacting business. And then I got to the point, I said, public comments. Any member of the public, you have three minutes. Please state your name, address, like all of us do. And all of a sudden, I saw my mama getting up. I was like, what the hell is going on? What is she? I got a re-election in March. So she got up. She said, Mr. Mayor, my baby, members of the commission. And I went into my baby mode, because I am the baby. And she got up and she started talking about the trash collection and complaining about the trash collection. <laughs> and then you know, I'm sitting there like, oh, Lord, I'm not going to get reelected. Even the mayor's mama, head, headline, mama complains about trash. And I said, well, I said, Ma, I just saw you an hour ago. Why didn't, she, why didn't you tell me? She said, uh, Mr. Mayor, my baby, <laughs> You think everything is just your responsibility. It is all of your responsibility on that dais to address this issue of trash. And I'll never forget that, because, Mayor, sometimes you think it's just on you. We have got to get this concept in our mind about governance, that it takes a team. And we may not always agree. But one thing about local government is that we have to model civility. And I know that's tough during this time. We cannot allow our citizens to see and experience what they see in other, at other levels of government. We have to be a team. And if we are, and we don't let technology take away that sense of connectivity, we will be much more successful as municipal leaders. I know times have changed since I was elected, but some things should never, ever change. And that is, in the words of Aretha Franklin, respect. We have to have respect for each other. And I always say the easy part was getting elected. The difficult part is governing. It is easy to knock on each and every one of the doors in your community. But why you were elected was to govern and lead your community. And that's why LMA is so important. When I was elected, I can tell you I thought I knew everything and did not know anything until I started going to the Florida League of Cities and then the National League of Cities and learning about how the issues 
bond issues, police issues, environmental issues, finance. I had no clue of what setting an Avalorum tax rate was when my city manager walked to me as mayor and said, Mayor, you want to keep the, the rate, rollback rate, the Avalorum rate? I was like, man, I just want to solve crime. That's the only reason I ran. <laughs> but coming to your state association conference and sharing and networking and learning that you are not the only one that is dealing with that issue is a relief. So I want you to, of course, continue to strengthen LMA, get other colleagues to come, because we're strong as a team if we also know um, what we are doing at the local level. LMA and the National League of Cities have been working so hard this past year because we have, in our nation, been struggling and trying to lead through a pandemic time. And we were successful. We had a Cities Are Essential campaign to let Congress and let the administration know that municipalities are at the bedrock of America and that if municipalities are not strong, our nation can't be strong. And so we started our partnership, actually, John, through the CARES Act. And we worked with President Trump to make sure that cities were in the discussion. And we were able to get dollars to the state as well as those cities that were 500,000 or more. And that didn't address 80% of the cities in Louisiana. So President Biden came in and we continued to fight. And we continued to talk about the importance of getting direct dollars to every municipality in America. And why is that important? It's important because each of you were elected in your community, so you should know what your community needs are. The state does not know each community leader. You are a mayor, you're a council member, you're a commissioner. You should be able to get the dollars to come directly to you. So we were successful in making sure through the America Rescue Plan that each city, parish, get direct dollars to you as municipal leaders. And I appreciate that because we got $65.1 million coming to cities all around America. Now I tell you that story, both of those stories, because I want you to understand one thing. The National League of Cities and LMA, we're not partisan. I don't care who is president, I represent cities. I don't represent Democrats, I don't represent Republicans, uh, Republicans, and nothing else. We need to fight for cities and make sure that we don't get mixed up of the importance of delivering. Delivering what we need. And we can be models for that. The money has come, right? The state of Louisiana, I think, is getting like 904 or $6 million. It's coming. So now the question is, what are we going to do with those dollars? So I'd like to step back and imagine and reimagine my community if I was mayor. I'd like to reimagine the infrastructure system. I'd like to reimagine my workforce plan. I'd like to reimagine my homeless problem. I'd like to reimagine an idea of creating affordable housing programs. I'd like to be able to reimagine how can I give additional dollars to the frontline workers in my community. That's what the ARPA program and opportunity is for each of you. I have this thing that I say DSD, doing something different. Because if you do the same thing over and over, what do they say? You're gonna get the same results. 
DSD, do something different. And the data will tell us, you know the gaps that exist in your community. You know the poverty level, you know the streets that need paved, you know the communities that need to get employment and workforce training. Look at the gaps. And one of the things that the gaps showed us is that people of color in most communities throughout the nation are lagging behind. So let's reimagine how do we engage every part of our community and address an area that we said historically, man, we just don't have the money to do it. We just don't have the money to do it. Now we have the money to do whatever that idea is. So I've spoken to some around the nation and they've said, we really don't need the money because we don't have any problems. Let me tell you, I travel all around America. I ain't never seen a city that don't have poverty. I ain't never see, seen a city that don't need their water and wastewater system to deal with the quality. I've never seen a city that had full employment of every person that is in that community. This is the time for us. This is our opportunity. This is our moment as municipal leaders to reimagine our communities. I can tell you one thing, if y'all don't want it, send it back. I don't know if Mayor Hunter is here, but I bet he would take it in St. Charles with all the challenges that he has had and the, the resilience that he has shown has just been amazing, continuing to push. So I'm asking you, continue to reimagine, recover, think about things that you didn't have dollars for. One piece of advice, get a plan, fund the plan, and make sure that as those dollars come to you, John and his team Karen, Richard, all of them, they are putting together a process to be able to help you. And so is the National League of Cities. We are putting together technical assistance because we want this process of getting direct funding to every city to be implemented again. The other thing is, I want you guys to know the power that you have. We're right now fighting for an infrastructure bill. Uh, Senator Cassidy has been working so well uh, with the National League of Cities. I must give him kudos. Again, that ain't about party. That is about delivering. Um, man, we don't got such buddies. He sometimes, he texts me, happy Father's Day, happy Mother's Day. I mean, he just texts me all the time. He texts me while I was on the diets yesterday. Um, and he is advocating uh, for infrastructure. And he's talking about the bridges and the roads throughout the state of Louisiana. We need to as well understand that as mayors and commissioners, city managers and staff, we have power. And we need to make sure that we use that power. Let me just say this. Um, Municipal leaders, you are what we need in America right now. We're not gonna recover without you. We're not gonna recover in the way that we are an inclusive, growth-minded, healthy and safe nation. You are the example that every kid looks up to. When they see the mayor, they say, that's the mayor. They don't say that's the congressman or the senator, they have no clue who they are. But they know who you are. And that's such a powerful role. But also those congressional members know who you are. Those senators know who you are. And when you see them, and I've done this so much in my new role as the executive director, uh, I'll have elected officials in my office and I've just briefed them. I say, go in there and you tell them exactly 
how cities function and the money that they need. Now Johnny, when he was mayor, he, he had a little backbone. But then you'll go in the room and the mayors and the council members, hey congressman, can I take a picture with you? And I just dropped my head. I was like, and then I have to go in strong. But you got to know that you have such power. And I want you as a part of my team. I want you so bad and I believe in you so bad that if there was a four foot putt and there was Tiger Woods standing there or Mayor Schaff. Oh, that's that funny, huh? I choose the mayor than Tiger Woods. If there was a tennis match going on and they said, you want Serena Williams or you want Jennifer Vittering? I say put Jennifer in because I know she's going to win that match. If there was a free throw and it would win the game, you said, uh, let's see, you want LeBron James or you want Mayor Lewis? Where is Mayor Lewis? I saw him. Oh, yeah, I'd say, give me Mayor Lewis. If you had the best football team in the nation, I know y'all going to think LSU, but I'm a Florida Gator, but we're going to talk about that later. They say, you want Coach O to coach that team, or you want John Gallagher? I want John Gallagher. That's just how much I believe in you. And if I was on the two-yard line, and they'd look at me and I said, now, who do you think can get that across the finish line, the goal line? All right, you want Drew Brees, Doug Williams? I'd say, give me Sharon Weston Broom every time. Every time. That's how much I believe in you. That's how much we need you. That's how much it is so important at this time that we stand up and own that we are the leaders of America. That we are the level that everybody looks to. And without you, Louisiana, our nation, will not recover. And as I started, God bless America, God bless you, and we will recover. Thank you all very much for this opportunity. Thank you. 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 Thank you.